In this week's video, I am finally finishing off that living room makeover and we are hunting for my dream tile. For this week's video, I have partnered with Wild. If you're familiar with their natural deodorants, well, you're in for a treat because Wild has just launched something new. Introducing the new Wild Body Wash. This body wash is 100% plastic free, compostable, and refillable. Wild has created a product that not only elevates your daily shower routine, but it also cares for our planet too. Let's talk about the formula. This body wash is made with natural and premium ingredients, resulting in the perfect silky gel that gives you a beautiful lather. It nurtures and replenishes your skin, leaving it feeling velvety smooth and hydrated. And the best part, it's suitable for all skin types, including sensitive skin. Wild has nailed the packaging too. The body wash comes in a sleek aluminium case with bamboo refills. Wild is now a certified B Corporation and diverted 102 tons of plastic from landfills in 2022. So why make the switch? Well, Wild has over 20,000 five star reviews on Trustpilot. And back in May, I featured Wilds on this channel and I got lots of lovely positive reviews from you guys who got the, the adorable limited edition Emma Bridgewater B case. While that's cute, a lot of you were raving about the product itself, which is what we're buying it for. And the good news, I am back with a discount code and Wild ships worldwide. I will pop my discount code on screen, but it is only available for a limited time. So if you are ready to elevate your shower routine and make a positive impact on the environment too, then grab your Wild Body Wash today. I will pop links in the description for you to head on over and shop and my discount gets you 20% off every item, not just the body wash. So if you want to get any soap, lip balms, or their famous deodorant, grab 20% off today. It's time to do some DIY. I am in the garden cutting up some trim pieces. I have two helpers with me today. However, you will see that Bon decided to climb the tree. So while I was trying to figure out how to do an external mitre corner for the coving, I also had to climb that tree to rescue him. But don't worry, he got down. Ah, mitre corners. Normally, they're handy enough. I have mastered them from doing different projects over the years. But one thing that was getting me was doing corners with coving because there is a curve on them. And if you just pop the coving into a miter box, cut it 45 degrees when it is flat, the angle is going to be wrong. And I had did that in a previous video and I was like, oh no. Then I went to B&Q to see if they sold the external corners, which they didn't. So then I had to consult YouTube to figure it out. There was a couple of confusing videos, but then I just saw one that made it make sense in my head. So with a pencil, I marked the ceiling edge. So the bit that touches the ceiling, then I mark the edge that's the wall. So that bit touches the wall. Just to make it easier when I'm cutting, I place the wall edge next to the top of the miter box and the ceiling edge to the bottom to the base. I have little clampy things on my miter box. So I positioned it. And then when it's at that angle, I then cut the 45 degree angle. I cut it wrong initially, <laughs> but I was doing the test cut, but I was using scraps that I had, but I didn't know if I was gonna have enough to finish this project. My brain just cannot get this right. I've made an internal corner. I was supposed to make an external corner in that test cut. So now I need to figure out what I did wrong. I've marked the ceiling edge and the wall edge. So I must have had it the wrong way round. This must be the wrong edge. I need to do an external one. So I'm like, if you look at this. Okay. That side goes that way, and I've cut it that way. <laughs> so I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna cut it that way. Where's my pencil? Okay. I'm gonna cut it the opposite way. I will not be defeated. But I think cutting it at that angle 
I, ha I think I have the angle in the box correct because there's a lovely internal corner. I just need to figure out how to do the external. So I think I need to cut it this direction. This is why you do a load of test cuts and it takes you 10 million times longer than a professional because you'll have to go and figure this out. I'm gonna cut this this way and I'll be back. Okay, don't get excited yet, but I think I did it. Okay. <laughs> I have an external corner, but I need to now see if, let's move the camera. I need to see if it's gonna be flushy wushy on the wall. Oh God, please. You don't know how many times I've done these test cuts. perfectly straight so we're gonna have to cut what's it do your best and cock the rest okay I'm a little bit off but hang on I reckon we can make this work sorry big bum is in the shot again right okay now I need to measure the full length to cut it and make a note angle You'll see if you watch any like tutorial videos on YouTube, they mark the ceiling edge and the wall edge. I, that's a really good tip because when you go to stick it in the mitre box, because some of the edges, the amount of times I've second guessed myself and had to come in and check. So mark the ceiling edge, this touches the ceiling, the wall edge, this touches the wall. And then when you're in the mitre box, the wall edge goes against the mitre box and the ceiling edge touches the base. I hope that explains it. <laughs> now, just like, I kind of like get this right. Before I adhere the piece to the wall, I will remove the trim of wallpaper at the top. If you get a bit confused like me, look at a piece of furniture that has an external corner on it or even a skirting board. But angles, they give me, you know what, they're the sort of mathematical equations that would make me cry in school. My brain just, my, it just cannot. I just cut a side piece and for a minute I was like, oh no, but, so this is that corner, this is that corner, oh, we have a corner, fingers crossed, and now I just need to cut the other side, mark out the wallpaper and remove the wallpaper from the top where this is going, and Pray. I don't like when I cut the styrofoam. It like leaves my hand itchy or something. Hopefully that's, hopefully there's not a lot of chemicals in it. Anyway, uh, don't break that. Okay, I'm gonna cut the second piece. So now it's time to fit it and fill it. So I'm gonna pop adhesive on the back, stick it up onto the wall. Once it's dry, I will then use some caulk to make it look professional and hidey any dodgy edges. Two weeks ago, I have a video where I did the whole room and this was the last section that I needed to figure out and do. So I will spare you all of me going around on the ladder, <laughs> fixing things through the wall. You can check out that video from two weeks ago if you wanna see the process of how I did the whole room. Now, I am waiting for the caulk to dry before I can paint it. However, I actually think the white trim, now I know the ceiling is off white, but the contrast of the fireplace, the furniture, and the coven around the top, I, I like that, but what have I done? I painted the coving in the room in the antique cream color the same as the wall and I have done it all the way around 
Um, so I need to, I suppose, keep it consistent. But I do like the, yeah, the contrast of it. It's quite, it's quite humid today. I asked the question in the video when I was doing the rest of the room about colour drenching. And surprisingly, I'm gonna say about 90% of the comments were saying, leave the seal in white, that they like the contrast of the two. And some of you had said that you find colour drenching a room can be quite dark. And I did say that was one of my concerns. Now when I looked online, and when I looked in the little interior things, um, it was like, colour drenching can make a room feel bigger. But, I get what you mean when everything is like all the one colour. Um, I'm not going to paint the ceiling cream at the minute. Maybe one day I'll wake up and be like, hmm, let's paint it. Uh, purely because I am sweating and the paint that I have is vinyl matte on that wall. And it can be a bit of a thug. It can be a bit of a thug as in it can get a bit, it look a bit muddy in places and you have to go over it. Like I gave it three coats um, on the walls when I did the panelling and I don't want to have to do three coats on the ceiling. And if I get a vinyl sheen, the sheen is going to be different to the wall because the wall is matte. So I would have to do matte on the ceiling to make it all drench the one colour. And I don't want to do three coats on the ceiling. My arms to be hanging off doing, doing ceilings. This is my least favourite DIY. Panelling the wall was fine. I didn't mind that. That was quite enjoyable. Hard, but enjoyable. I don't know if it's the angle of doing ceilings. Oh, not my funnest DIY. If you can afford to pay someone to do it, I would pay someone to do it. <laughs> Does anybody else have an unfinished project? that you don't pack away the tools because you leave them out because it means that you have to trip over the toolbox or the caulking gun or the woodwork table. It's a reminder of you need to finish that project that you have been putting off. And I think the one thing that was putting me off was trying to figure out that angle. It's like I needed a day or two to ponder on it. So I'm finally packing away the toolbox because this job is complete. All I have to do is give it a lick of paint I'm just gonna paint the trim the same color as the rest of the trim and I love the character that it has just added to the room like it's quite subtle but I just love the bit of detailing let's go tile shopping and see what's out there so I am in the planning stages of a kitchen kind of project and I have my eye on a particular type of tile which I will talk about in a few minutes. But I haven't been tile shopping since my bathroom makeover a couple of years ago. I think that was 2021. So I wanted to see what was in the tile shops. And thankfully, not too far from me, there is three tile shops. There's actually one next to another. I don't know how they compete with business. And then there's another one around the corner. So I popped in to see what tiles they had. I am looking for a floor tile. But you know yourself, when you see pretty wall tiles, you're like, ooh, <laughs> that would be nice as a kitchen backsplash. Something I noticed is of the three shops I went to, a lot of them had similar things. So I'd say if you are, first of all, if you are looking for some tiles, I hope that you get some inspiration from like this section of video clips because I know especially when people are working full-time it's quite hard to get out to visit all of the different tile shops most of them are in like industrial estates as well and it's nice to see things on camera as well as what it looks like on a website I don't think I would ever just buy tiles from what I see on a website because there's something that you need to touch, you need to see, is it matte, is it shiny, what's the, I love textured tiles as well, like what do they feel like, so yeah, I hope this is helpful for you if you are also in the planning stages of a project. And while there are fancy shiny tile studios and warehouses, don't forget the good old faithfuls, you've got B&Q, they have tiles as well, they actually have a really good tile range, they didn't have the brick one that I was looking for and you also have Woody's as well, they don't have as good of a range of tiles 
but you can pick them up in your hardware stores as well. I think Goodwins may have some as well. You could check out Chadwick's. And if there's something you're looking for, I know sometimes people may have some tiles left over. So if it's a small project, so you might find boxes of kind of secondhand, well, not secondhand tiles, because I imagine it's quite hard to remove a tile perfectly without cracking it. But people may have boxes left over from projects. So if you're looking for like a bit of a budget option, you could maybe have a look at that. Spoiler alert. I did not find what I was looking for today. I did see some really nice tiles and it's nice to be like, I don't know, bank them in your head going, oh yeah, I seen that tile. You know, if someone asks me a question sometimes in the comment section, they might ask if I've seen a particular thing. It was nice to see what's in the shops at the minute, but I do need to cast my net further to try and find what I actually want. Hello, I am currently researching the tiles that I would like, but I'm also double jobbing. If I keep looking out the window, it is because the two cats are having their, their, they're probably like poor little prisoners, their little hour around the garden. Thankfully, Bjorg has not been getting stuck up the tree and they're staying in the garden, so I can kind of watch them and they potter. But there's always that anxiety when you have them right the back. But anyway, let's talk about tiles or should I say the lack of tiles <laughs> because there's a specific type that I am interested in but I want to see what they're going to look like in person in real life. So I am a fan of that kind of cottage brick effect flooring and of course I went into I went into three tile shops because they were near each other but they I just thought they all stuck the same thing but it was just different prices and they did have some nice tiles there was one or two nice flooring options but I asked in every shop do you have this brick effect and they all were like oh did you see that on Pinterest yeah we get people coming in with pictures from Pinterest and I was like okay so the tile that I'm kind of after is probably um either it's not a sort sought after so not many people are looking for it it's a bit more specialist um or somewhere i may have to go to the salvage yard so i have seen brick shims i think they're called um i just looked online and the tile merchant has brick shims and i looked at the pictures of them i don't think they're what i'm looking for um but i found a website so i think lone fox last year did a brick effect floor I just remember seeing it in a vlog. Now he's in America, so I imagine where he sourced his from would be a colossal <laughs> to ship to Ireland. But I found a website where Lydia Millen, so she is doing a brick effect floor or a brick stone floor, I don't know the word, um, in her house at the minute. Now she's doing a large area, so I can only imagine the price of the tile. See, this is why it's nice having a small house because it's not as expensive. <laughs> the bigger the floor, <laughs> the bigger the price, more maintenance. Um, so I, she had linked her tiles, Capietra, and they're in Sterling, so I imagine that they will ship to Ireland. However, if there is any specialist tile shops in Ireland that have this, I did save on Instagram, I stumbled across like an Irish Instagram page who had an area with this brick floor that I'm interested in. And I did save it, but I don't know, my phone is somewhere, but I'm still using that block app blocker. So I can't even look at Instagram if I want it until seven o'clock, my phone shuts down. Anyway, but I'll scroll, I'll put some pictures on screen of the tiles like I was thinking of, um, obviously they're, <laughs> oh, they're more expensive. Of course they are, of course they are because I couldn't just have cheap taste. But what I was thinking is, um, it could be something, if I want to get this brick effect, I could, you know, do this in the bathroom where it's a much smaller floor and I can, get that effect or um, I could ideally I wanted the hallway into the kitchen area to be the one floor 
but it could be a case of the hallway leading into the kitchen area is two different tile options. One of them being a bit cheaper to offset the cost of the tiles that I want. Um, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can order a sample from this website and if I can get a sample from Ireland then that gives me hope I could get the tile but if you know of any Irish websites that have that maybe they stock this brand um, that would be great because if I wouldn't have to get a big customs charge or a delivery charge Good old Brexit with the customs. Remember that aunt house I bought for my nephew? Oh, I got done on the customs with that. But yeah, if you know of any other tile shops, not the kind of mainstream ones in Ireland, that have something, I don't know, a little bit more special. I did ask the girl because when I got the tiles from my bathroom upstairs, she was able to kind of order me in something from a supplier for the chevron tiles that I have in my bathroom. But um, I did ask in these places and they were like, no, none of our suppliers have that brick effect. Um, YouTube blocks links in comment sections. I, don't, I think it's this top spam. So if you do know of anywhere in Ireland that has this particular tile, just type in the, uh, what do you call it? The name of the tile shop. Don't put a link because it, I don't know where the comment goes. It just deletes it um, when you try to put a link. I did see some nice tiles when I was, yeah. And I'm thinking as well, is this, I think stone flooring is timeless. I'm always worried about when it comes to trends. Like remember everyone had the Moroccan tile trend a couple of years ago. I still really like them. I still really like them. Remember I was on Camino and I stayed in this little uh, Spanish place and the, the bathroom was like freshly done and they had those Moroccan tiles and I loved it. I was like, I feel like, I don't like going for anything that's too trend. So I'm like, is this stone floor going to be faux pas? But um, one of the women actually, when I was in the tile shop did say, um, when I was asking about the stone floor, she's like, oh, that's very European, which I suppose it is like in French houses and chateaus and Spanish houses, there is a lot of terracotta flooring. Um, so she was kind of saying, you may have to get like an overseas, you know, supplier. Anytime they say overseas, I'm just like, ka-ching, ka-ching, ka-ching. <laughs> anyway, oh, the tiles be beautiful. You know what? Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do the lotto. <laughs> I'm just going to do the lotto. I don't even have to win the full lotto. The plus one would get me these terracotta tiles now. But um, I need to measure out the surface area so at least I know, I don't know, how much you're looking at. And I'm kind of like, this and the doors I want for here, they're the two things I'm willing to give more budget to because they're the two features that I'm after. I can scrimp on other things, but these are the two things that I, I want for this space. So I appreciate your help and your hunting for these tiles for me. Um, I think I need to go and visit the salvage yard as well, see if I can get some samples off them, see what their brick shims are like and compare the two. See, I imagine the ones from this tile place, because I imagine you have to seal the stone as well. I have to look into the maintenance of them as well, because I imagine they need to be sealed multiple times and then cl like cleaning them. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> tile dilemma. If you have that brick floor, let me know. Let me know in the comment section. Myself and Miss Puggy just realised that we never showed you the finished fireplace. The fireplace is all painted, finished, nice and tidy. And I managed to not get any paint, caulk or filler or anything like that on the wallpaper. And while this wasn't my favourite of DIY projects, I actually think I learned a good bit. You know, every time you tackle something 
that is, I don't know, wrecking your head, whether it's a mitre corner or something like that. I just think the detail that it's added to the room, I just think it finishes off. Sorry, I have the hiccups, which is really annoying. Um, I just think it finishes off this paneling product. I feel like it looked unfinished. So yeah, I am loving how it's looking. 